Hi, this is Matt Morris, and first off, I want to congratulate you for taking time out of your schedule to listen to this program. I'm excited that you're here with me now because you're doing something that the majority of people never do, and that's invest in yourself. Most people will think nothing of spending hundreds or thousands of dollars a year on fuel for their vehicle, but they'll invest virtually nothing in fuel for their most important possession, their mind. And if you're anything like me, you probably agree with Jim Rohn's famous quote that says, formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. Now, I'm excited right now because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there will be people who listen to this program, apply the strategies I'm about to share with you, and experience a level of success that they've never even dreamed would be possible for themselves. Now, why do I know that's true? Because that's exactly what happened to me. Nine years ago, I was $30,000 in debt. I was living out of my beat-up little Honda Civic, bathing in gas station bathrooms, and selling above-ground swimming pools door-to-door in the hottest two months of the summer. I had hit absolute rock bottom and had absolutely no idea how to pull myself out. Well, I had an awakening one night, like many of you will have from listening to this. I got exposed to a set of principles and strategies that allowed me to completely reinvent my life. And from the ages of 21 to 24, I went from being homeless, living out of my car, to earning a six-figure income, working for myself, taking exotic vacations around the world, and living what at the time was my dream lifestyle. Now, from the ages of 24 to 29, I became a millionaire and have helped countless other people earn six- and seven-figure incomes. And what you're about to learn is the seven specific strategies that I use to create those seven figures in revenue, not once, not twice, not three times or even four times, not five times, but six separate times in my life before the age of 30. And the same strategies that have now allowed me to generate over eight figures. And I hope you don't think I'm saying any of this out of ego or to try and you know make myself sound great. I'm telling you this because I am absolutely no different than you. The only difference is that I know these seven secrets and I've mastered them in my life. And because I know these seven secrets and I know them like the back of my hand, you can drop me in any city in the world, put me in any industry, any business, and with 100% certainty, I know that I can become a millionaire. And if you'll learn and absorb this material, that's the exact same confidence that you can develop. And if you know my background in school and my background when I first got started in business, you would know that I have absolutely no God-given skills or ability that are any different than anyone else in the world. Now, the only thing that might be a little different about me is that I had a tremendous amount of desire. And because I had a huge desire to achieve success, I learned these strategies That was probably the most difficult thing that I ever did was just having to learn them on my own. Now, once I knew and understood these seven strategies, making a million dollars is probably the easiest thing that I ever did in my life. You see, if you're anything like I am, you have a huge desire to be a millionaire. You have a huge desire to be in a position to take exotic vacations around the world. You have a huge desire to provide more for your family, and you have a huge desire to spend all the time you want with your family instead of having to trade your life away for a job. You probably have a huge desire to get out of the rut. And in my opinion, the only difference between a rut and a grave is the depth of the hole. Now, the purpose of putting this CD together is to give you a shortcut to success. And if you'll follow it, it will get you out of that rut and get you into the life that you truly want. You see, success in life doesn't have to be this long, difficult process. I believe firmly that one of the secrets to success is finding someone who's done it figuring out how they did it, and doing the exact same thing. And because I follow that belief system, success comes very easy. You know, these seven strategies allow you to go straight into the meat of exactly how I created seven figures six separate times in my life before the age of 30. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the first of the seven strategies. Now, the first one, and really the main reason I believe I've been able to create the success that I have is my ability to dream big. A wise man once told me, you will never live life beyond your wildest expectations until you first have some wild expectations. You know, when we're children, we have an amazing ability to dream. And think about this for a minute. When you ask a child what they're going to be when they grow up, what do they say? 
Do they say, I'm going to try to be a millionaire? Do they say, I'm going to try to be an astronaut? Do they say, I'm going to try to be a professional athlete? No. They have their dream, and that's what they're going to be, period. Now, unfortunately, as they grow a little older, people begin to tell them that they're being unrealistic, that they should aspire to be something that they can accomplish more easily. You know, for many children, society steals their dream. And just like how a child lowers their level of thinking because of practicality, most people lower the le their level of thinking because they've given up. You know, they've made goals like getting out of debt instead of having goals like owning their own multi-million dollar home. Puny goals like having enough money to pay all their bills instead of having enough money to live on the interest created from their investments. Well, folks, it's no wonder that children stop looking up to their parents at a certain point in their life. It's a sad fact, but for most families, this is true. When a child is six years old, their parents are their heroes. But when they're about 16, the child wonders what happened to them. They see their parents have gone from grown-ups to given-ups. It's also no surprise that most young adults end up giving up on their dreams. They're simply following in the footsteps of their parents. And as I look back at myself and so many others that I've been able to assist in accomplishing success, a character trait that's common among us all is our ability to dream big dreams. It's the ability to break out of common thinking that you've gotten stuck in and begin to dream about the huge possibilities that are there for your life. And I've found that success is largely dependent on desire. A burning desire is what you have to have in your gut to do what's necessary to succeed. And if you want to harness your passion, your drive, your discipline, your determination, you have to have a burning desire. And I'll tell you the formula for creating that desire is through dreams. Dreams are the fuel that fire desire. Dreams are the fuel that get you back on your feet when you've been knocked down. Dreams are the fuel that give you the motivation you need to put that extra mile in. Dreams are the fuel that provide the sheer willpower that allow you to say, I can, I will, and I must. Dreams give us power. They allow us to stand out above the crowd. They're an essential element in leadership. Dreams provide inspiration to yourself and others when they're shared with enthusiasm and faith. Now, as some of you may know, I just got married to what I would consider to be the most beautiful woman on earth. She has the most amazing heart, the most amazing mind and soul of any woman I've ever met in my life. And one of the reasons we're both so attracted to each other is because we both love to dream big dreams. In fact, it's one of our favorite hobbies. You know, many nights we'll sit on the couch and we'll talk about where we'll be in five years, how we'll be able to take our private jet loaded down with supplies to third world countries, and how we'll be able to make an impact in people's lives that can't help themselves. We'll dream about how we'll be responsible for saving the lives of thousands upon thousands of children who are dying because of starvation. You know, we'll sit and dream together about helping create financial freedom for thousands of other people. How we'll take vacations with our top leaders to places that most people only dream about. Now, here's what you have to realize. There's millions upon millions of millionaires around the world. So if it's possible to reach that level, why would you accept anything less? You know, for years, I used to get caught up feeling guilty about dreaming big dreams that seemed overly materialistic because my desire to help others. You know, I've always been a very giving person. And I realized not long ago when Warren Buffett, the second richest person in the world, donated billions of dollars to the charitable foundation of Bill Gates, the number one richest man in the world, I realized that there's an abundance of wealth to be shared. So instead of thinking lack and scarcity, I began to realize that there's plenty of money in the world to go around. You know, I realized that we could have the material possessions just like Mr. Buffett and make a huge contribution to society. In fact, the material things themselves have little meaning. What really has meaning is the person you have to become in order to create that type of income. What I love about the direct marketing industry is that in order to become massively successful, you absolutely must first become great at assisting others in achieving success. Now, this is the only industry in the world where contribution plays such an important role in achieving wealth. When you simply learn to make other people's dreams and goals more important than your own, you achieve success. Now, living the lifestyle of your dreams and contributing to society in a massive way is nothing more than a choice. So begin to believe that every man, woman, and child was created equal. And when you stand firm with that belief, 
You develop the mindset that you possess everything it takes to live the life of your dreams. Now, if one person deserves success, you must realize that you deserve it as well. When you don't pursue your dreams, a little part of you dies inside. Going after your dreams gives you energy. It gives you life. It gives you fulfillment. And the most widely recognized definition of success is the progressive realization of a worthwhile dream. So what that tells me is that true success comes not from the end result, but from the pursuit of your dreams. So begin to dream again. Imagine the most that's possible for your life. And remember that no matter what your current level of thinking is, you're probably thinking too small. Dream big dreams. Create a dream that inspires you, a dream that's more than you can even imagine possible for yourself. You need a dream that will take your breath away. And if your dream doesn't scare you, it's probably not big enough. All right, let's cover strategy number two. This is one that hit me like a ton of bricks when I heard it, and I actually got angry with myself because it's so simple, but I hadn't applied it in my life. In fact, it's so incredibly easy, yet almost no one follows through with it. And that strategy is to become an expert. Now you're probably thinking, yeah, right, easy? Well, I would have thought the exact same thing before someone shared this concept with me. I was actually on a teleseminar late one night when a multimillionaire said this. He said, my definition of an expert is someone who is in the top 1% knowledge level compared to everyone else in the world. He said, when you read five books on one single subject, that's more than what 99% of all other people in the world will ever learn on that particular topic. So to be in the top 1% knowledge level on any one subject, you're only five books away. And when you look at it like that, it does sound pretty simple, right? Well, I decided to take this concept to the next level. So I made a commitment that I would become an expert in network marketing. And instead of reading only five books, I would read every book or audio or video program I could get my hands on. So I ended up reading a couple dozen books. I listened to about a dozen other courses on the subject of network marketing. And to take it one step further, I applied a, a kind of a new strategy. Here's the strategy that I adopted. I decided I would go through every course, every book, as if I had to give a training on the information the very next day. So as I read and listened, I created a journal and basically wrote notes for anything I felt was valuable information. I created what I consider to be a multi-million dollar journal. And as I started to grow my network marketing business, I could refer to this journal over and over again. And you know what? This has been one of the most powerful reference guides and really a true secret to my success in this industry. At a moment's notice, I can give an hour-long training on many different subjects on network marketing because all I have to do is open up my journal, pick a few pages to talk about, and voila, I'm an expert trainer. I can still remember doing conference calls with my team when I wasn't very confident in my abilities. I'd spend about 30 minutes before the call and outline from my journal what I wanted to talk about. During the call, I would basically read almost word for word what I had written in my journal. And you know what? After the call, everyone raved about how great the call was. I even shocked myself. I then decided to become an expert in leadership. So I went through about a dozen books and audio programs and took pages and pages of notes in my journal. And all of a sudden, people in the industry were telling me I was the greatest leader they had ever worked with, all because I suddenly knew more than 99% of everyone else and applied that knowledge. Then I decided to become an expert in internet marketing. I read about half a dozen ebooks that I found online. I went to a few seminars, went through some home study courses, and within two years had generated over $3 million online. You see, the secret to my success is that I am no smarter than anyone else. I'm just smart enough to know this strategy. And I'm 100% confident that I can become a millionaire in just about any industry in the world by applying this strategy because I know that almost everyone else will simply be too lazy to do it. I recently read a book written by John Paul Getty, who at one point was the richest man in the world. He made his fortune mostly in the oil business in the early 1900s. And while most people in the oil business simply drilled for oil and based their success on luck, Mr. Getty read and studied everything he could get his hands on about geology. 
And because he studied geology and the nature of where to drill, instead of relying on luck alone, he quickly became one of the most successful oil men in the world. It amazes me how simple it really is to become an expert and put yourself in the top 1%. When you know 99% more than everyone else, your chances of achieving success are infinitely greater. So that's it for strategy number two, become an expert. Number three is create a game plan. And what this strategy is really talking about is goal setting. I grew up playing sports, so for me, the words game plan get me excited and motivated. So you can call this strategy whatever you like, but the important part is using a specific strategy for setting and achieving your goals. Now, borrowing pieces from the goal setting process is outlined in what is considered the most famous book on success ever written, Think and Grow Rich. I've adopted a few special key characteristics for every goal. Number one, and write these down. Number one, must have a specific goal. Number two, have a specific time frame to achieve your goal. Number three, it must be written down. Number four, must determine your why for achieving the goal. Number five, must develop an action plan to reach your goal. And then number six, must think about and look at your goal every day. If you look at the first few pages of my day planner, you'll see that I have a goal section that I review on a daily basis. Each page has a separate goal split up into three sections. Section one is a specific goal with a deadline. Now section number two, why it's an absolute must to achieve the goal. So number two is your purpose. And then section three is a specific action plan to achieve the goal. Let's talk about section one first. What I want to make very clear is that you must be very specific in your goal. Now realize that every time you read your goal, you're putting an imprint into your subconscious mind with that information. And your subconscious mind is the part of your brain that brings out the motivation, the ability, the creativity needed to accomplish your goal. Your subconscious doesn't interpret or assume what your conscious mind knows to be true. So if you're vague with your goals, your results will also be vague. So if you want to create specific results, create very specific goals. Now section two is your true motivator behind the goal. Having a goal of earning a full-time income is great, but to harness your true motivation, you have to have a purpose behind it that burns inside you. So having a goal of earning $50,000 a year might be fairly exciting for you. But if you dig a little deeper and figure out exactly why you want to be at that income level through your own business, you'll experience an entirely new level of motivation. Now, here's just a couple of examples of creating a purpose behind your goal. I must achieve this goal because I refuse to miss out on seeing my children grow up by trading my life away for a job. That's a lot more motivating than just earning 50000 a year. Here's another. I must achieve this goal because I must be a mentor and role model to my children so they never live a life of poverty and mediocrity. Much more motivating. So when you create a why behind every goal that inspires you, you'll create the motivation necessary to accomplish it. So section three is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you spell out exactly what you're going to do to accomplish your goal. Here's an example of just a few things that you might have on your action plan for that goal. I will attend three guest presentations, conference calls, or live meetings per week with a minimum of one guest at each event. I will read a minimum of 15 minutes per day from a book on network marketing, personal development, or leadership. I will call my mentor at least twice per week for advice and counseling. I will personally enroll a minimum of one person every single week. I will call each person I've personally enrolled a minimum of three times per week to see what I can do to assist them in building their business. Now, that's just a few examples of an action plan to getting to a full-time income in network marketing. Now, the next step in the goal-getting process is to look at your goal every day. Now, this is why I have my goals at the very front of my day planner. Every time I open my planner, my goals are right in front of me. And I have a reminder of the goal, my purpose behind it, which creates my motivation. And I see my goal every day. I see the steps needed to make that goal a reality. Let's go ahead and move on to strategy number four. Number four, massive action. To give yourself an example of this strategy and effect, I'm going to tell you a quick story about the first time I achieved massive success in network marketing. I'd been in the industry for a few years with pretty limited success. I was struggling, but I had a massive desire to be a top leader. And I listened to a Jim Rohn program that basically gave the essence of what I call my formula for success. Write this down. 
your level of success is equal to your level of skill multiplied by your level of action. Let me say that again. Your success equals your skill times your action. What Jim Rohn said in this audio program was that if you want to experience the exact same success in network marketing as someone who has 10 times your level of ability, all you have to do is work 10 times as hard. Now, I took this as a challenge when I heard it. I was working a full-time job at the time, and the top leader in this network marketing company was a full-time networker who had earned over a million dollars in the industry and had built an organization previously of over 70,000 people. Now, the best thing I had ever done was to build a team of about 150, so a long way away from an ability level. But you know what? I had a massive dream to change my life. So I decided that I would take Jim's advice and I would just flat out outwork every other person in that company, including this seven-figure earner. I knew the seven-figure earner was only really working the business about 20 or so hours a week. So here's what I did, whether you know you consider this wise or not. I quit my full-time job and I made a commitment that I would do whatever it takes to become the top earner in that company. I essentially gave myself no other option. I would either go absolutely broke or I would achieve the success that I had dreamed of my entire life. I backed myself into a corner. I burnt the bridges behind me so I had absolutely no way to retreat. I created an action plan where I would work like a madman to achieve my dreams. I made absolutely certain that every morning I had a breakfast meeting at 7 or 8 a.m. to show someone the presentation, either personally or for someone in my organization. I made sure I booked my calendar and at a minimum was doing five presentations a day and every hour that I wasn't presenting to someone one-on-one, -on -one, I was on the phone prospecting. I would work until 11 at night because when it was 11 in Texas, it was only 9 o'clock in California. Then after I was done making calls, I'd put signs out on the side of the road about four or five nights a week to generate leads, which meant I would go to bed about 3 o'clock in the morning. I worked over 80 hours a week, and within my first month, I was the top recruiter in that company. I personally enrolled about 40 people in my first month in the business, and within six weeks, was earning a full-time income of $1,000 a week. Within 90 days, I was earning a six-figure income, and within six months, I was earning $40,000 a month. Now, an interesting thing happened in that six months. I worked more hours in my business doing presentations, phone calls, trainings than I had ever done in the entire lifetime that I had been in the industry. Now, because I worked so hard, a funny thing happened. My level of skill went through the roof. Not only had I outworked that seven-figure earner, I had gotten pretty darn close to his skill level, and I definitely earned a lot more money than he did. Here's the thing. When you put in massive action, you develop an amazing level of skill. Now, always remember this. Massive action equals massive results. And that's an easy thing to do, but a much harder thing to commit to. And I don't know where you are in your life, but at that point in my life, I made a commitment that I would not be a quitter. I made a commitment that I would be man enough to take the rejection, man enough to burn the candle at both ends, man enough to be able to provide financial security for my family, man enough to crawl through broken glass if that's what it took. I heard a man in a training one day address the men in the audience that lit a fire in my belly. He said, men, if you're the kind of guy that comes home after work, plops down on the couch in front of the television while you're barely making enough to pay the bills, if you're the kind of guy that lets his favorite TV show or sports team be more important than your family's financial freedom, if you're the kind of man that's not willing to go out and fight for your success, fight for your family's success, and the kind of man who wants to leave a legacy of mediocrity for your children... I won't call you a loser, but my friend, you are definitely not a winner. In today's society, I believe we need an awakening. An awakening to the fact that all you desire in life is right in front of you. If you're man enough or woman enough to simply go out and get it. Okay, now that we understand the principle of massive action, let's move on to strategy number five. My core belief is that everything rises and falls on leadership. Whether you're a leader in network marketing, a leader of a nation, the leader of a company, a military unit, or a leader in your family, everything rises and falls on your ability to lead and influence others. And I'm sure this is not you, but maybe you know someone like this. They say things like, well, if I just had a better leader to work with me, I could really be successful. Here's a wake-up call that I had to learn myself. That magical leader in your upline that's going to come in and really make your business take off does not exist. So stop looking for a leader and become one. 
Here's a secret. People will only follow other people as a leader if they see them as a better leader than themselves. So if you're a five on a scale of one to ten, you're going to have a bunch of fours and threes following you. If you build your leadership abilities and you become a nine, you're going to have a bunch of sevens and eights and possibly even a nine or two following you. The only reason I began being able to recruit leaders who are nines and tens is because I became one myself. Now here's another thing. In network marketing, people develop habits that they learn from seeing others perform at a higher level than their own. So you have to set the bar high. I told you that I personally enrolled 40 people in my first month when I achieved massive success. An interesting thing happened. I didn't have one single person out enroll me. I had some people get close and enroll 30 to 35, but nobody did 40 because I had set the bar at 40. You know, after noticing this, I decided I would raise the bar. I went out and enrolled another 20 people and got up to 60 total people personally enrolled. Something almost magical happened. All of a sudden, I had people in my group who had enrolled 40, 45, and 50 people. You see, once they saw that it was possible from their leader, that gave them the faith and the confidence that they could go out and achieve it too. I could talk all day on leadership, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to give you a few quick laws of leadership that I have to tell you are not suggestions. These are not shoulds. They're not maybes. These are musts. So if you want to be a powerful leader, follow these laws. First, a leader must have a dream larger than those that you lead. Big dreamers inspire others to dream big. Second, a leader must have an attitude superior to those that you lead. Leaders fill themselves with positive thoughts. They act in an upbeat manner at all times when they're in front of those that they lead. So positive attitudes are contagious just like negative ones. But here's the thing. Negative attitudes have an even greater effect and impact on your people. This is important. In network marketing, one negative or critical statement about the company, your upline, or the product can destroy entire organizations. So remember, have an attitude superior to those that you lead. Third, and this should go without saying, but displaying a commitment to integrity and character. So here's the thing. Never talk behind anyone's back. Not your upline, not your downline, not your crossline. When you always do the right thing, your team sees that. They have the confidence and the faith and will follow you through thick and thin, no matter what the circumstances are. No other leadership principle is as important as integrity. I've been fortunate enough to have a group of leaders that I worked with for almost 10 years now. And the reason we've stuck together for almost 10 years is because we trust each other. We know that we have each other's back. And we know that if we say we're going to do something, we honor our word. Now, fourth, make a commitment to personal growth. Personal stagnation is the cause of decay and failure in most people's lives. People want to be around someone who's moving forward in all areas of their life. My personal belief and the reason why I'll think nothing of spending $50,000 in a year for personal development is because I believe in life you're either spiraling upwards or you're spiraling downwards. You're never staying at the same level. A good friend of mine and an early mentor of mine said it best. He said, when you're green, you're growing. When you're ripe, you're rotten. Now, fifth, persistence and determination. Realize it takes time to achieve greatness. You know what? I spent almost four years in the network marketing industry before I earned a six-figure income. My first year and a half in the industry, I enrolled three total people, two of which I paid for myself to get in. I ended up $30,000 in debt, but I persisted, and after four years, I was living my dream lifestyle. I haven't had to think about money in years because it's just not an object. If I want to take my wife to Paris for the weekend or you know, spend $1,000 a night on a suite in a hotel because it's her birthday, I don't even have to think twice about it because it's such a low percentage of my income. But here's the thing. If I had given up after failing initially, I would never have been able to experience this kind of lifestyle. Here's what's important about a true leader. A true leader will always find a way over, around, or through any problem that arises and will do whatever it takes to be a winner. On to strategy number six, build your vision. And this has been another one of the most important lessons I've learned in my entire life. For years, I would hear people talking about their vision and how they were going to go out and do this or that. So I'd work on my vision by writing down my goals and figuring out what I wanted in life. But here's where the confusion comes in. Most people think their vision is simply their goals. 
What opened up my life to an entirely new level of success is when I realized that my vision is not my goal at all, but my vision is how I see myself. Your vision is what you truly expect for yourself. Your vision is what determines your success. You see, when I entered into my first entrepreneurial venture, I was a broke college student, drowning in debt and working for minimum wage. My vision, or where I saw myself at the time, was that of a broke college student who had been poor most of his life. I was constantly talking about how much money I didn't have and how broke I was. So what happened was that no matter how many goals I created for myself, my true vision, which is really controlled by your subconscious mind, was trained to be broke. So if your true vision is what determines your success, the big question is how do you change your vision to create the results you want? First, you need to know what has shaped your vision. Your vision is created by three things. Number one is what people say about you. Now, obviously, not much you can do about that other than the obvious, which is don't hang around people unless they believe in you. Don't hang around people unless they celebrate you, not tolerate you. Number two is the results that you've experienced in life. Again, not much you can do about the past, so start focusing on and start celebrating your achievements. Now, number three is by far the most powerful way that your vision is shaped, and that's through what you say and what you think about yourself. Every word, action, and thought is an entry into your subconscious mind. Every single thing that's put into it produces some kind of result, either negative or positive. So if you put something negative in, you will only get a negative result. If you put something positive in, you will produce a positive result. Everything you put in your mind, every thought, every word, every action gets registered into your subconscious and those deposits actually create who you are. Now, here's what's interesting. Your subconscious mind completely controls your success. It's infinitely more powerful than your conscious mind. It believes and it acts upon every single thing you tell it. So if you tell yourself you're broke, you're tired, you hate your job, your subconscious mind figures out a way to manifest those results in your life. If you begin to tell yourself you're wealthy, you're energized, you're happy, your subconscious begins doing everything in its power to create that reality. Here's another trick. Your subconscious mind does not know the difference between a truth and a lie. It simply does its best to carry out exactly what you've programmed it to believe. So when you say, I'm sexy, I'm confident, I'm successful, your conscious mind may be telling you you're full of it, but your subconscious, which is much more powerful, takes that as a command, and it works out a way for you to be all of those things. Now, the key is to constantly fill your subconscious mind with empowering, uplifting, and motivating deposits. Now, the common misconception that most people have and why average people are average is because they live by a philosophy of have and then be. They walk around their entire lives being miserable, saying things like, if I can just find the woman or man of my dreams, which is have, I'll be completely excited about life, which is the be. But life doesn't work that way. Whatever it is that you want to attract, you have to become the person before you have the results. Your dream spouse is probably someone who wants to be with someone who's already happy and completely excited about life. So until you become the kind of person who will tr attract them, you will never have that person. So remember, it is not a situation where you can have and then be. You must be and then you will have. So that ties perfectly into strategy number seven, which is 100% responsibility. Now, I can talk to a complete stranger and in less than five minutes determine exactly what that person's level of success is based on asking them one simple question. What is their biggest failure in life? Now, if that person goes on and on and starts telling me about someone else dropping the ball or how their partner did them wrong or how it was someone else's fault, I instantly know that person is nowhere close to being where they want in life because they're holding themselves completely powerless. When you blame others, you hold yourself completely powerless. Have you ever heard someone say this, my team's just not doing anything? Now, I'm sure you have never said anything like that, but maybe you've overheard someone say it. Now, here's the secret. Your team will never do anything until you stop putting the blame on the team and start putting the blame on yourself. 
Before I became a leader in network marketing, I used to say that exact same thing. I used to complain that the company's website wasn't impressive enough. I used to say that you know the people I enrolled weren't any good. I used to say that the company's system wasn't good enough, and you know that's why I'm failing. And by putting the blame on something or someone else, I could keep my little ego in check and try to appear to everyone else that it wasn't my fault. Here's what I finally realized. By shifting responsibility to something else, I was being a spineless little wimp. Here's the secret to the most powerful people in the world. They take 100% responsibility for everything in their life. Have you ever heard someone say, there's just not enough time in the day? I know, I know, you would never say anything like that. But that was my big one. I used to say it all the time. And you know what was true for me? I never got everything done because I continually made excuses and affirmed that statement that there wasn't enough time in the day, I somehow never had enough time. Now, do you really think people like Bill Gates, Donald Trump, Richard Branson, do you think they whine about not having enough time in the day? Of course not. When I learned the secret to power was in 100% responsibility, I suddenly had plenty of time in the day and I worked out a way to get everything done. I stopped making excuses and I started creating results. In network marketing, when the company didn't have a good website or any sales tool, I took responsibility and I created my own. When I couldn't get my sponsor on the phone, I took responsibility and became successful anyway. When my group wasn't producing, I took responsibility and I found another group that was. Here's another way to start taking responsibility. If you want to achieve any goal, your first step is to declare it. Take 100% responsibility for creating it and then clear out all the words like hopefully, can't, maybe, and the killer, try. When someone tells me they're going to try to do something, I always know they're not going to do it. Try is nothing more than a front-end excuse. It's what you say when you have no commitment. Words like that are all signs that you don't believe in yourself and that you're using your own power against yourself. You see, we all have the same amount of power. It's just deciding if you want to use your power negatively or positively. When you use your power negatively and use words like try, the only thing you're saying is let me be powerless. So from this day forward, realize that when you make excuses, you're basing your results, your success, your freedom, and your livelihood on something else. When something else other than you is in control, you are weak. You have no power. But when you take 100% responsibility, you have power, and you gain the ability to control your destiny. So that concludes the seven strategies to creating seven figures. These were the guiding principles, along with my faith in God, that have allowed me to create my dream lifestyle. They've proven to create seven-figure results six separate times in my life before the age of 30, and since then have created eight-figure results. My advice to you is to listen to this program over and over until you know them like the back of your hand. Repetition is the mother of all skill. So if you want to master the art of becoming a millionaire, you'll want to master the strategies needed to get there. Now here's my disclaimer, it may not be easy. Achieving your dreams may be a fight, it may be a struggle, you may lose sleep, it may require you to experience rejection, in fact, it will probably hurt. But fighting for your destiny, fighting for your dreams is the one fight you will never regret. You see, I believe you have a calling. Somewhere deep inside you, this calling for your greatness is waiting to be answered. You may have been ignoring it for years. You may have spent the last few years caught in your normal routine of just getting by, but nonetheless, your calling is there. That calling is what begs of you to get out of the routine, get out of the rut, get out of mediocrity. The calling eats at you. It's the voice deep down in your gut that wants more. It's that voice you hear when you want to take your family on an exotic vacation, but you can't afford it. It's that voice you hear when you're at a restaurant and you have to look at the price before you look at the item to see if you can afford it. It's the voice that you hear when you see someone else who is admired for doing great things in the world and you realize you could do more. You are not put on this earth for mediocrity. You are put on this earth to achieve your destiny. God has given you the power to achieve great heights, the power to make a difference in the world, and the power to realize your dreams. My core belief in life is that we were all given the exact same ability on earth. How we manifest those abilities, however, is up to us. 
Unfortunately, too many people live their lives filled with excuses. Excuses like, I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough education. I'm too poor. I'm too old. Or even the one I use for years, I'm too young. They're all lies that we use as excuses to live small. And whether you want to admit this about yourself or not, you were created with all the creativity, all the genius, all the determination, and all the strength that you need to create greatness in your life. I'll leave you with my favorite quote that I've read hundreds of times over the years, and it still inspires me every time I read it. Far better is to dare mighty things, to win glorious triumphs, even though checkered by failure, than to take ranks with those poor spirits who neither enjoy much nor suffer much because they live in the gray twilight of mediocrity that knows neither victory nor defeat. <laughs>